everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of the Dense Pixels Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Brad, joined by my co-host, Carrie. What up? And Micah. Hello. I don't know why I mixed it up this week. <laughs> I, I, I truly you gotta no keep idea. us on our toes somehow uh, hey, man you, it's it's the it's the pecking order for it's the social pecking order white man <laughs> white woman <laughs> black man i get it <laughs> oh my god um all right well welcome to look forward uh, yeah, no, you know what let's i mean we can start there life life comes at you like super fast it turns uh, yeah. out even on a holiday weekend as it <laughs> um yeah so some news came out yesterday so if you miss look forward you can go back and check it out of course many of you probably have heard even if you don't follow politics that closely that the state of texas uh has just signed into law today uh the banning of abortions past the detection of a fetal heartbeat which usually happens around six weeks uh, AKA when a lot of women don't even know that they're pregnant, quite honestly. And not only have they banned abortions in the state after that fetal heartbeat detected, but anyone in the country can now sue any Texas resident that they suspect of either performing an abortion, if you're a doctor, or assisting in the perpetration of an illegal abortion. Like, even if you just drove the woman to the abortion clinic or thought about driving the woman to the, to the abortion clinic, and they can somehow prove that you thought about it and considered it, even if you ultimately didn't carry that out, they can sue you uh, for $10,000. And the craziest part, well, not, not that that's not the craziest part, but the craziest part of that aspect is that even if you lose, you're not on the hook for any, like, lawyer fees, which is which is incredibly insane to me. Like, why would you just give people like pot shots? Whatever. Obviously, most people, most especially liberal-minded folks, uh, spoke out vehemently against this law because it's because it, it's draconian as shit. Fucked yeah. up. Yeah. Like every every day that I still have a female reproductive system in my body is a day I have to be concerned which sucks yeah it's it, 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 <laughs> like, it's not not lost to anyone is the fact that these laws of course are being made a majority by people who have no real you you, you know you know medical like expertise as, as like all this is is right-wing moral posturing um like i'm not here to argue with anyone over the moral repercussions of abortion anymore because there's no point in doing that what boils down on the legal end of things is that otherwise in this country like you cannot force someone to give up an organ you cannot force someone to undergo uh, a medical procedure uh, of that kind uh, or of that caliber uh, without their consent you know you cannot compel someone to donate bone marrow even if it would save someone else's life, even if it's the morally right thing to do. You can't even force someone to donate their organs after they die. But they're forcing women to carry pregnancies that they might not even be aware of at that time to term. And that's fucked up. And that should be illegal. Very Legally speaking, up. it should be illegal. Like, well, I'll tell you one person who, uh, who doesn't agree with you. Uh, and that is... Well, now former CEO of Tripwire Interactive, uh, John Gibson. So here, here's the thing, right? If you're going to, like, it, like you can have whatever opinion you want. Your opinion might be the wrong opinion. Mm -hmm. But you're allowed to hold that opinion. However, what's probably not a great idea to do is to show your entire ass <laughs> on social media. Because John Gibson tweeted on September 4th, and the timeline's important here, quote, proud of the U.S. Supreme Court affirming the Texas law banning abortion for babies with a heartbeat. As an entertainer, I don't get political often, yet with so many vocal peers on the other side of this issue, I felt it was important to go on the record as a pro-life game developer. I would argue that unless you're willing to support those kids after they're born, you're not truly pro-life. I would argue that if you don't support having a mask mandate for school children in your state, that you're not truly pro-life you're probably all, pro all of this yeah but, uh, <laughs> but, but that's not to be pedantic 
Um, I'm ready to be real pedantic. Yeah, so, so John Gibson <laughs> tweeted this. Um, literally the next day, the company that he was the CEO of put out a statement immediately distancing themselves from John Gibson, which is never a good sign. Uh, Tripwire, for those who don't know, by the way, they're a Georgia-based developer. Uh, they are a co-developer on Shipwright Studios. Um, they worked on like Chivalry 2, Man Eater, and, and a couple other games. Uh, so, oh, I'm sorry, Tripwire is not based in Georgia. Ship, Shipwright is. Shipwright pulled out of all their contracts. Yeah, Shipwright canceled all their contracts. Yeah, with, 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 with Tripwire, <laughs> like, like, like immediately, which is hilarious. Um, so he got banged on by a few industry folks. And then... Cliff Blazinski called this dude an asshole. Yeah. That's how you know this dude's an asshole <laughs> when fucking Cliff Blazinski makes like looks good by comparison. <laughs> and uh, by the time we got to yesterday, Labor Day, a holiday in the United States of America, uh, John Gibson was, well, they said he stepped down as CEO. I'm pretty sure he was thrown off of his perch. I'm pretty SEO. sure they gave him the uh, quit or be fired uh, <laughs> <laughs> choice. In the, um, in the words of uh, one of the greatest wordsmiths of our time, Smokey, how in the hell are you fired? Well, your day off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, man, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I did what I, I normally don't do. I saw this on um, online and I read comments under the article. And of course, everyone's like, well, I guess there's no such thing as freedom of speech in America. And it is actually. Let, yeah. let me once again state <laughs> as someone who is smarter than anyone who says that there isn't free speech in America. And I have the paperwork to prove it. Uh, free speech doesn't mean freedom from consequences. No. And, and again, as we as we have to roll out every single time something like this happens. It's not the government <laughs> that, that threw John Gibson out as CEO of Tripwire Studios. It was, yeah. in fact, the I guess what I guess the board of uh, Tripwire Studios who decided that they don't want this guy representing them as a CEO, uh, which is something that normally conservatives are all too happy <laughs> right? for private companies to do. <laughs> Isn't that isn't that the free market y'all love so much? Yeah, it, it's it's like I said, it's funny how folks on the right uh lobby hard for free market economics until it rises up and bites them directly <laughs> uh funny how that works um again if you are going to post something out there that unless you are completely dense and and not aware you know self-aware of the you know the body politic as it were is going to be inflammatory like you can't be surprised that this happened, right? You can't be shocked that this happened. I'm pretty sure he was pretty pretty much sitting there with that shocked Pikachu face as soon as the, the board came calling, <laughs> telling I mean, him to uh, clean out his desk. I mean, but in this day and age, right? Like, like maybe, maybe he wanted to quit. You know what I mean? And like, this was his like this was his way of, of burning every possible bridge in the industry, right? Like, yeah, I was gonna say, like, I don't know if too many like right leaning game development studios out there. So unless you're trying to get <laughs> out of the industry and then go and then go work for like Halliburton or something like I don't know, I don't know what you're uh, what you're trying to do there. Yeah, I don't I like, <laughs> like, like, like Coy Barlog is like, yo, what are you doing? Like, that's the God of War guy, the <laughs> God of War guy, the guy who helped create, you know, who helped uh, shape Kratos, the 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 id alpha male, you know, like psycho killer. Even he's like, oh, come on, dude, what are you doing? What, what's your problem? Uh, look, I'm not, I'm not, I, uh, you know what? I'm happy. I'm happy that he that he got fired. Uh, and normally I'm like, you know, I, everybody needs a job. Apparently they don't, no. especially if you do this, like if you, like if you, if you lose your job for, for something that is out of your power, like I feel for you, but yo, you decided to type whatever you're thinking to everyone reading and 
and you you pay for it. Social look, I, the one thing that I am uh, I hate social media. I think it's I think it's a, <laughs> the, I think it's the, one of the worst inventions uh, ever made. Uh, I think it I think it 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 it, it is toxic, right? But it, but the one thing that it is that it does is it 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 cleans house. It does shit like this. It exposes people because people are fucking dumb. And people are, I think people who are deep into social media, I think they are narcissistic, right? Like I think, and it, it by nature, right? It's my page. I'm posting little pictures of my son and shit. Like this is me. It's all about me. But Twitter is, is I've got a thought and I need everyone to hear it. And, and the one good thing about it is that you you can really find out where the dummies are and look look life, life comes at you fast <laughs> and and I, i'm i'm glad this person doesn't have a job fuck him yo fuck him look, forever if i was a uh, if i was an a plus podcast host i would have immediately thrown it to you to do our discord uh um is and look at- social media technically it is yes Yes. technically it is um as we said many times before in situations like this uh shutting the fuck up is free no one's saying you have to put this out there and again like if you feel this way i don't agree with your opinion i think it's a rather horseshit opinion as a matter of fact because again telling women what they can do or what they must do with their bodies uh is is an insane thought process in my mind however read the room like like take the temperature of the room like you see you see you're in an industry the games industry is generally left-leaning um just by, as as a byproduct like at least the game development industry obviously like the gamer is part of it yeah <laughs> cross crosses <laughs> the gamut um but you know that you're in a left-leaning industry your comments are going to be considered provocative whether you think they are provocative or not provocative and you lost your job as a result because you felt it was so important to support a law that was in a, that was going into effect. Like, like, like nothing you did helped shepherd that law along. Like that law was happening regardless. No, you're just co-signing bullshit. Yeah. You're just co-signing bullshit. Uh, That's a great way to put it actually. Um, So yeah. So like I said, you don't have a job anymore. Um, I'm not sad for you. It is. No. And uh, it looks like his. Uh, oh no, his Twitter's still his Twitter's still there. He still has no because he yeah, as the people as people the, like this people like this they wear it like they wear it like a badge of honor now. Yeah, like you got to lean into it now because that's what's your other option? What's your other option? You got to oh, lean God. into it. Shit, not not only so like I'm, I'm I just went to his profile real quick. Um, not only was he not only did this happen over Labor Day weekend, dude was at PAX West when he tweeted this shit out and got fired while he was at a con. Yep. Good job. I'm glad that the worst shit I tend to post on Twitter is just like dumb shit I post after getting too high on a weekend. It's like, yeah. And they he fucked all the way up. Good God. Yeah. I mean, look, man. I I, I look. I get it. There's probably people right now who are uh, anti-abortion, right? I won't say pro-life. I'll say anti-abortion. Because Here's what you what should it call is. it: anti-choice is what it is. And, and or anti yeah or anti choice I uh, you know I I I get it nobody's nobody's telling you that you that you can't have those feelings and nobody's telling you that you can't tell people but like yo you know the world that we live in like don't pretend that you don't there are certain things that I there are certain thoughts that I have in my head that I would never say because I know the world that I live in. And I, I just don't understand. I, I, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand how, how th- he can't be surprised about what happened. He can't. And yet I bet you, I, I wouldn't be shocked if, like I said, I, I don't know his politics beyond this. I don't know if he's like a huge MAGA head or anything like that, but something else we've discussed and look forward a lot is that white people really, especially conservative white people are just dying to be oppressed. And so a lot of people will take stuff like this and just kind of latch onto it as, as like their, their beacon of how they're being oppressed by society. When in reality it's, it's them, it's, it's them putting the boot 
on their own head. It's that fucking meme, <laughs> like, with, 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 like with the kid. Um, so yeah. So again, shutting the fuck up is free. Um, and and don't show your ass online because right. that shit. Because you get it, people are gonna clap at you hard and fast. Like it's 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 gonna happen. We've seen it so many times. Yeah. Or do show your ass online and Pl- prepare like, for it to be spiked. To. Yeah. Look, it's <laughs> it, so. it has been, you know, my favorite thing maybe maybe that's being mean i don't give a shit at this point but to see people say oh i'm not gonna wear a mask i'm not gonna get vaccinated and then they catch covid and they end up in the hospital and it's just like it's all online for people to see and it's just like am i supposed to it's like gif i'm supposed to feel sorry for this bitch i don't i I know somebody i know somebody i know i i've spoken to someone who has that thought process it is my my wife's childhood friend she has a husband she got the, the vaccine. Her kids from a separate marriage got the vaccine. He did not. And the child that those two have together didn't because she's too young. He got it. He gave it to the daughter. And his ass is on a ventilator. He's a boomer. He's in his mid to late 50s. And I'm, and it's the second my wife told me that, the first words out of my he's a nice guy, right? First words out of my mouth, I'm not surprised. Yeah. I just, I'm just not. And I, I don't, I don't have any sympathy for these people. No. Um, you I, don't, know. I don't feel bad for people who are losing their jobs because they won't mask and they, they won't get vaccinated. Yeah. And sorry and, for people who show their ass online politically and get fired for it. And look, I just, look, I'm, I'm out. I'm out of sympathy for these people. I'm let's done. Dis- let's dispel something right now, right? The mask, the government telling you to, that you should wear a mask, right? is not the same thing as 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 this abortion thing right like well, Period. well government shouldn't tell me that i should wear a mask if i can't tell uh, a woman to wear, like, it's not the same thing it's not one is a personal decision that that affects ultimately one person right and, and the, the other, other is a public health issue society let me let me tell live- you about a tweet that i saw today that somebody said that our treatment of the vaccine hesitant is going to be the civil rights issue of our time. Oh my God! I really we will all be judged for how we're reacting in this moment. Like, get the fuck out of here. No, no. I like. I'm tired of seeing headlines that are like, "Oh, you should stop making fun of people uh, because they're dying." And I'm like, "No, fuck them. They, they, <laughs> they haven't. They have not done anything right, and now they're finally paying for it." Yes. Allow, allow me to quote George Costanza. When I say we're living in a society, (laughs) (laughs) if you don't want to live in this society, then go, go fuck off somewhere. Get out of my country. But, (laughs) but but if you want to live in this society, you got to live by society's rules, man. Look, I I just, whatever, yo, look, look, I can't stress this enough. I've said it time and time and time and time again, and people just don't listen Get your politics out of my video games, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Fortunately, that's the only political story that we have this week. Well, sort of. Sort of. It, 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 political story. I, I think I think that's the only one. There, okay. there, there's don't worry, there's some more like shitty there's, development treatment look, coming later in the show. Um Let's switch to some lighter fare. <laughs> the, the news actually is really, all the news kind of sucks this week. Um, so let's go to lighter fare. So as if as if preordained by fate or whatever deity you choose to follow, uh, right as I decided that I wanted to purchase F1 2021, uh, PlayStation went and had a 25% off sale on the game this past weekend. So I, I went and bought it immediately and started fucking around with it. Um, so this was a very quick lesson for me that all sim racing games are not even close to being created <laughs> equally in terms of how they play. Cause F1 is kicking my ass so far compared to Gran Turismo. Wow. Um, Cause here's the thing about F1 cars. They're real fast. Yeah. <laughs> they're real yes. fast. And a lot of the tracks are real small. And another underrated thing about Gran Turismo, or I I don't know, underrated. Another thing about Gran Turismo is that Gran Turismo doesn't have damage in the game, but F121 
100% does. So you take a corner really poorly and smash into the wall and knock a tire off. That's congratulations. It. Your race is ended because that's just kind of, that's just kind of how F1 works. Um, the game is fun. Uh, it, it's a series that has, it, it's, it's funny. So like, I don't understand why people buy the F1 games yearly. And there are people out there that do much like any other sports game, because in my brief window into the F1 series from Codemasters, it seems like very, very little changes from year to year. Like they add one like tent pole feature uh, to every new game. It seems like for year to year, but most of the game kind of stays the same. So the feature they added this year uh, was the breaking point uh, uh, story mode that's in the game because every sports game has to have a story mode now uh, where you play a young up and coming driver named Aiden Jackson who joins his first Formula One team uh, I can't tell you how that is yet because you have to win your F2 race at the start of the story mode to progress in it and I haven't been able to do that yet so I will let you know uh, when that happens um, but, but the driving is fun uh, it has the full F1 uh 2021 like series of tracks in the game except for three uh which are going to be added as downloadable content later apparently that free downloadable content later apparently they couldn't uh squeeze them all in as they were developing the next gen version of the game um but it's f1 like i said they have you know grand prix and time trial modes that you can do they have online they have a dedicated esports section um in the game which is pretty nifty and i think probably more games should think about doing in the sports field um and then they have the the career modes which you can either uh play someone else's like one of the existing team seasons or you can be the owner driver of a 11th f1 team essentially and kind of work your team up from an upstart to you know a champion over multiple seasons which is probably the direction that i'm going to head in once i once i get decent enough uh at actually driving that i won't embarrass myself uh, when I decide to actually take on Grand Prix. Right now, I'm doing a lot of time trials uh, in F1 2021 so that the track is empty and I can learn the circuits uh, before I race out there with 19 other cars who are all trying to drive me off the road, essentially. Um, but it's cool. Like I said, it's 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 very customizable as well. I think that's the other thing that fucked me as I, as I went in. Uh, I turned off a lot of the assists that are in the game and i will tell you that when you first start playing f1 2021 uh use the assists to start <laughs> and then wean yourself off of them as you get better over time because there are some assists like the anti-lock brakes and like traction control that if you don't know how to command the car correctly uh you're in for a very bad time because it's very easy to lock the brakes up on an f1 car as you're as you're braking hard into a steep corner uh, coming down from going 190 miles an hour so <laughs> <laughs> but uh it's been fun so far i've been enjoying it um i'll be dabbling with this for the next week or so uh because then after that dishonored or not dishonored uh death death loop comes out next <laughs> week uh which has completely snuck up on me somehow uh even though it's my most anticipated game of the year i'm like oh shit that's actually next week i can't believe that so i, I will be getting into that hard um, yeah I'll, I'll i'll be there with you yes Fantastic. I, I, I knew I could, I could, uh, if I pointed you in the right direction that you would eventually, uh, cave. Uh, yeah, yeah. You knew that you could get me to spend money on a video game. Congratulations. <laughs> <to Mr. Thomas. laughs> well, Micah, get your, uh, get your wallet ready for this week as well. Cause there, there's one game on this list that I know you won't be able to resist. Uh, there's a bunch of new games coming out this week. Micah knows exactly what I'm talking about, too. <laughs> it's not the game that he's actually going to buy this week, because there is one game on this list that he is going to buy. But I'm There just, is one game on this yeah. list that I have pre-ordered uh, yeah. uh, along with uh, uh, Not Dishonored. With Not Dishonored. So uh, Chernobyl Light, which is uh, a highly rated game that's kind of similar to the Stalker series, comes to PlayStation and Xbox. Uh, Encased is on PC. Fist, Forged in Shadow Torch comes to PlayStation. Uh, Sonic Colors Ultimate comes to PlayStation, PC, Xbox, and Switch. More on that later. Uh, Blood Rain Betrayal Fresh Bites comes to PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC. They're still making <laughs> Blood Rain games, guys. Um, shocking. The Artful Escape comes to Xbox and PC. Inked A Tale of Love comes to PlayStation, and Xbox. Kraken Academy comes to PC. Life is Strange True Colors comes to PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, Stadia, and PC. Lost in Random comes to PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. 
Micah's pick of the week, NBA 2K20, <laughs> the PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC. Uh, Port Royale 4 comes to PlayStation and Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5 specifically. Uh, the game Mike is actually buying this week, Tales for Rise, <laughs> Xbox, and PC. Also, and, yeah, go ahead. Uh, also, WarriorWare comes out this week. Yes. Uh, however, I forgot to put it on this. Um, the Pixel Remaster of Final Fantasy IV releases tomorrow as well on mobile and steam yeah so <laughs> uh, if you're playing it on mobile i'm sorry for you um if you have a pc <laughs> you should play final fantasy 4 because i am not buying those until they release on the switch i'm putting my foot down and demanding that square put it out on the console that it makes okay well here's the thing is that a lot of their font choices for these pixel remasters fucking suck and you can mod them on pc <laughs> <laughs> So I'll probably be playing Final Fantasy IV on. If only I had a Steam PC. Deck, then I could play it on there. Sure. <laughs> I can't believe I pre-ordered that. I gotta cancel that. He, 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 what? He only yeah, put down gotta, the five dollars. I just put the five dollars down just to reserve it, but I kind of want my five dollars back. <laughs> it's not like you're gonna be get one till like mid next year. Anyway. I know, right? Like maybe I'll change my mind again. But. <laughs> You should buy it and just, and just flip it for become a scalper. Just Micah, you it. gotta yeah, knock you it go. off. <laughs> <laughs> just, I like you, but you gotta, you gotta, I got gotta a cut the shit man. out, man. I got a problem. <laughs> I got a problem. It's uh, it's it's all based in my childhood. My parents didn't want me to have it, so now as an adult, I have to have it. So that's that's it. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna blame blame my parents. That's it. If you want someone to blame. If you have someone to blame and you want to tell us about it, go to dunspixels.com slash fans. There we go. And join our Discord. Uh, we talk about all sorts of stuff in there. Uh, uh, English Premier League, uh, F1, uh, video game news, uh, general chatter, uh, wrestling. There's a big wrestling pay-per-view that Brad and I, well, that I will talk at Brad about when Carrie leaves. Um, oh, yeah. Carrie will still be here. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe save it till the bitter end, then then, okay. you'll, then you'll bail. Oh out. yeah, yeah. Carrie doesn't want to hear about it. Fuck. I gotta go to the gym. We have yeah. a, we have a lot to talk about. Quite frankly, I, I have a bone to pick with uh with the E. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a good time in there, and uh, you can you can reach it at densepixels.com slash fans. Uh, go to youtube.com slash densepixels. Uh, click subscribe, and then click the bell, and then click all. And uh, you will be notified when all of our videos are uh, are up. Um, go to uh, wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to all of the TMP Studios podcasts, including the Nerd Apocalypse, Black on Black Cinema, which we haven't done the preview episode yet, but um, we uh, we decided on a movie that we're going to do, and I'm I'm hesitant to to tell you here because it's not like official official until we do the uh until we do the preview episode but uh it's a movie that is that is going to be garbage and um and and i can't wait to uh i can't wait to talk about it because it it's just looking at the trailer uh it's 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 atrocious it's atrocious and i can't wait we haven't ripped on a real bad movie uh in a very long time um Coming Distractions, the contemporary movie review show. Jay and I have to review Shang-Chi uh, and The Legend of the Ten Rings, which will be fun. Um, and the weekly preview episode of the Look Forward Political Podcast. Now, I know that's a lot, but like you're listening to this and you're like, man, I really want more. Well, go to densepistles.com slash premium. And for $5 a month, $50 for a full year, you get access to the backlog of all of our podcasts, including the uh, airing of grievances our Seinfeld podcast which will probably start up again in October just because it's super convenient uh now that Seinfeld is coming to Netflix and we don't we have the DVDs but like who the fuck like where do you stick a DVD at anymore right who has a disc drive anymore exactly well uh, on our consoles but like I'm not sullying my video game console for a digital video disc get the <laughs> fuck out of here um no Time to Bleed, uh, The Men with the Golden Tongues, which uh, Brad and I will will schedule. Uh, I really uh, can't. Next episode, I, I watched yeah. a, uh, I, I watched like a critical look at like the the kind of the 
messages behind Metal Gear Solid 2. And like, I'm like super excited to to talk about this, to go through this game now again. Cause it's good. Well, we, we will schedule it. Uh, the second that this uh, episode is over, we will pencil in some dates <laughs> and we will have a hard date for when uh, you will be able to experience the lunacy that is Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. Uh, Upstage Conversation, uh, the podcast that Carrie hosts with a rotating uh, group of guests when they talk about all the snapping <laughs> and the jiving. And, and is it Steven Spielberg? Steven Spielberg is making Steven like the, doing the a new West Side story. Movie. Yep, yeah, he's doing a new yeah. West Side story. Uh, it's funny you should mention that because uh, that was actually brought up on the most recent episode, which finally got done uh, with, uh, with our friend Terrence. Back from the grave. I dragged him out of his grave and sat him at a microphone and made him watch In the Heights. Uh, so that was fun. Got to talk about how much I don't care for Lin-Manuel Miranda. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, hopefully that'll be more in regular rotation once I can convince more of these dudes to watch musicals for me. Because <laughs> they're not watching it for themselves, I'll tell you that much. Uh, uh, no, no, not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, and you get the full episode, which is you know, 90 to 120 minutes of uh, the Look Forward Political Podcast, which is always a uh, always a very entertaining time. Look, if you thought that just because Trump is not in office anymore, nothing ridiculous politically uh, is going to be around to talk about, you are dead wrong. Uh, hence the opening of this very episode. <laughs> so um, that's pixels.com slash premium is where you get all that stuff. I don't do this often but I have to give Micah credit oh. because I remember, and I might be misremembering, but I'm pretty sure that I'm correct in this. I remember when a couple of years ago, as we were leading, we were talking about like what the next generation of consoles is going to look like. And it was either posed as a question, or we were just talking about it in general about the cyclical nature of who kind of leads the console race from generation to generation. And Micah made the point that Sony has a tendency when they when they are comfortably in in the catbird seat, as as the parlance goes, um, to start fucking up on their own. <laughs> and that often like that often comes back to bite them in the ass. Like we saw that with the PS3 generation. Uh, and Micah predicted that it was highly likely that we might see that again in the PS5 generation. And I dismissed it and I said, ah, you know, Sony, like, I think they learned their lessons and, you know, now that they're, you know, now they're head, like they'll, they'll be more conservative and they won't do dumb shit that will shoot themselves in the foot. Well, lo and behold, here we are, the year of our Lord, 2021, uh, PS5 and Series X have been out for almost a year apiece and Sony, unprompted by anybody, is out here doing dumb shit um <laughs> in this case we're talking about the debacle behind horizon forbidden west so way back in the day uh when the playstation 5 was first coming out sony had mentioned that games that were going to be launch titles were going to get free next generation upgrades they mentioned spider-man miles morales is one of those games uh there's a few other ones but they also specific even though it wasn't a launch title they specifically mentioned uh horizon forbidden west as being a game that was going to get a free ps4 to ps5 upgrade and that it was going to come out on both consoles well fast forward to about a week or so ago a little less than a week ago and sony has announced that you can now pre-order horizon forbidden west however the only way, if you pre-ordered it on PS4, to get a free upgrade to the PS5 version is if you pre-ordered one of the digital deluxe editions, which cost $80. If you bought the $60 uh, version of Horizon Forbidden West, then you would not be able to get a free upgrade to the PS5 version. Well, people rightfully yelled about this and then pointed out to Sony specifically, like, hey, you literally said... <laughs> <laughs> less than a year ago that there was gonna be a free upgrade for this game specifically right people came with those receipts prepared yeah honest. they're like what the fuck are you doing and so sony confronted with this was forced to walk it back and announce that horizon will have a free upgrade if you buy the ps4 version however 
going forward, every game now that comes out, uh, that comes out on both consoles, if you buy the PS4 version, you will have to pay ten dollars uh, to upgrade to the PS5 edition if you if you purchase the PS4 version. So I have so many angles to tackle this from. Let's start with the initial fuck up in the first place of not having a plan in place to do a free upgrade to the PS5 version when you promised it 10 months ago, <laughs> which, is, which is an inexplicably stupid thing to do because all you did for yourself is created two days of shit PR. Yeah. Only to have to walk it back, which was the inevitable outcome. Like you weren't gonna just like stand in front of your right, like were they really going to double names? down on this? Yeah, like you weren't gonna stand in front of your past names and be like, Yeah, I know we said this, but we fucking lied. We were kidding. <laughs> so that's number one. Like that, like that in itself was was pretty fucking stupid in the first place. Um I gotta say, I have well, and number two, it's created this bizarre situation now. Where if you think about it, if you own a PlayStation 5, why and you don't plan on getting one of the deluxe editions of the game, why wouldn't you just buy the PS4 version of Horizon Zero Dawn for $60 and get your free PS5 yeah. upgrade instead of paying $70 for the PS5 version of the game? Exactly. Like, how are you not going to price both at $60? Right. <laughs> in, in, in this case, I, I don't I don't understand that at all. Is well, because all because all PS5 games have to be seventy dollars. They, they have, have to be. They can price. Oh, they have to be. Want. No, no, no. <laughs> they have to be. <laughs> yeah. Then what? What I ultimately what I ultimately land on that I, that I'm the most frustrated with is this ten dollar upgrade path for first party games. Now, take third parties out of this equation. Third parties can do whatever the fuck third parties want to do. It's their prerogative to do that. Your Sony. You know that through no fault of your own, the PlayStation 5 is damn near impossible to get right now, unless you do like a whole bunch of legwork or if, unless you want to pay like 150% of the price of the PlayStation 5 to get one. And it's going to be that way. Like, like a story came out from uh, Samsung or Toshiba, I can't remember who, that said that the, you know, they won't be able to fully allocate all of their chip orders. Uh, they, they won't get caught up until 2023. So we might still be looking at shortages for a very long time um, with the PS5 console. I would think that until PlayStation 5s are readily available in the marketplace, that it would be a real stand-up move on your part to offer free upgrades for your first-party games to force people not to have to either wait, you know, wait to get the game on PS5 or to have to spend an extra $10 after the fact because there's a lot of people who would get a ps5 if they could right now but they can't for various reasons out there i think that that would be a really cool thing to do um i don't understand what you really like like is the 10 extra dollars for the ps5 version really that important well see brad this is why you don't run a company (laughs) yes that 10 dollars is important how else am I going to eat my Chipotle? <laughs> yeah, I, got, I need, that, I need, I need, I need that $10 to buy it. Yo, Glock, so, yeah. Glock costs extra. Um, <laughs> look, I think it's inherently a little fucked up that they're basically asking people who are um, unable to get a PS5 at this time to future-proof their purchases by spending more money now. Well, and, and, but here's the other thing too. Let's say, let's just say, for sake of argument, God of War comes out spring next year. Okay. God of War comes out in April, let's say. And let's say, you know, I'm a big God of War fan, but I haven't been able to get a PS5 yet. Obviously, I'm going to buy it on PS4 right away. God of War is a game with a fixed length. Like, I might play God of War and I might beat it in a month. I'm not, like, what if I don't want to play it again? Like, right. I'm not going to spend that $10. Whereas if you give me that free upgrade to PS5, I might check that shit out again. Like I, like I might go back into it. If you add stuff to the game, like it's, I feel like you're going to get less people upgrading because there's not going to be people that upgrading are upgrading just because they're going to be people that upgrade because they want to continue playing the game. If they don't have to be playing that game anymore, you're not going to see that. Um, 
the other issue that I think Sony has with this situation in particular is that they continue to look silly next to what Microsoft is doing in this console generation, which is pretty much just knocking it out of the park. I remember when smart delivery was first announced, everyone kind of laughed at it because we didn't see the utility in it and it had a goofy name. And we're just like, why are you touting this as a feature? Let me tell you something. I have never been more jealous of not having a feature on my platform of choice that I've never used before than I am of smart delivery for Xbox one. I bought Hades on PlayStation five, which gives you both versions of the game when you purchase it. Like you when you buy it on PS five, you get the PS five and the PS four version. So I downloaded it on my PS five in my office and I downloaded it on my PS four in my living room and I started playing it on the PS5 in my office. And one day I went downstairs, I was in the hangout living room. I was like, ah, oh, you know what? I could, I could stand to fire up some Hades. So I, I turned it on PS4 and I booted up the game and it was starting me fresh. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I have to pull my save down from the cloud because that, you know, so it, there, I don't have smart delivery. So it's not right there. I go to the cloud saves for Hades on my PlayStation 4, and there isn't a save file there. Do you know why there's not a save file there, Mike and Carrie? Because the save file that I have for my game of Hades is for the PS5 version of Hades and is therefore not compatible on the PS4 version of Hades. Why is there a difference? Like, and, then, and, and that's the thing that I'm talking about that Microsoft hasn't figured out. You don't buy a Series X version of a game or an Xbox One version of a game. Oh, you, you just buy, buy the game. The Xbox version of the game. And no matter what platform you play it on, there's your save. It's just like your information's there. You can just pick it up and go. You can do the, the smart delivery so you can resume in and all the stuff on your console. You it's don't real to, convenient too. Yeah, like you, it's you it's a quick manually, sync. And yeah, then you don't that's have to it. manually sync anything. You don't have to pull, da- you know, download data from the cloud. Everything's just right there. The only thing that you lose if you play a game on the Xbox One is you might lose some, you know, performance or graphical fidelity. Yep. That's, that's it. it. That's it. I don't understand why PlayStation didn't think to do something along those lines or like, I don't know how possible it is if they don't figure out a way to do that. Like if we don't eventually just have a PlayStation version of games that come out, they're going to look antiquated in like a year compared to what Microsoft is doing just from a content delivery standpoint. And this is something that I wish I could have like gone back in time to myself a year and a half ago and, and smacked myself in the face to realize how important that stuff was, even though it didn't seem it at the time, just the way that Xbox is doing it just feels like the way things should work in this day and age. Like, like when I go between my iPad and my iPhone and my Mac, I don't have to manually move files around because everything's in iCloud. I can just access it all. It works on everything. The fact that Sony's not doing it that way kind of looks stupid. <laughs> like, like now that we've gotten to see everything in practice over these past couple months, and, and it, it's really frustrating from a consumer standpoint that they didn't have this forethought to look ahead. Yeah, man, I, um, it, uh, I, I don't know. It, it's, I, I really wish these two companies would just kind of like steal each other's ideas, like <laughs> all of them, like all of them. Like, and, and, and that way you can just only have, cause yeah, like you said, the, all of the accoutrement that Xbox has always, that they've always touted, like, you know, oh, you could do this and this and this even back way back, you know, like it's a DVD player. Oh, well, well you could watch TV on it. Oh, well, look at all this extra shit. Right. But now they finally got all, uh, all this extra shit that's actually really cool and at, you will actually use. I can't tell you how good quick resume is. I it, it's it's fucking amazing. And um, but the problem is that I don't want to play any fucking games on it. Like there are no there are, like all the games that interest me, like that I really want to shell out money for. I'm I'm playing them on my PlayStation. Even like even like Tales. Right, like this new Tales game that's coming out, like the it's gonna use the haptic feedback, and while 
while like who cares like i care because it's a feature <laughs> on my fucking controller so i want to see how it works so i that and that's my issue right like but game pass is amazing like if there are games on there that there are games on there that you would try like right like it's it's awesome playstation now sucks balls it's terrible i hate it but 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 the Sony but the Sony platform has the games that I desperately want to play, and I just I need these two companies to just like <laughs> just rip come together. together. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, just make the same goddamn machine, and then and then you can really judge who has like a loyal fan base. Like, who gives a shit? And then secretly, you all share the profits while you're playing all these stupid idiots in in all these blue versus green people against each other. And then Nintendo's just sitting there doing its own thing as per <laughs> usual. Let me let me hey. tell you something else. The you should have seen some of the the verbal gymnastics that some Sony ponies were doing <laughs> to, to like justify this decision, like to yell at people that were reporting uh, that this was stupid. Like like there, like there there is a lot of like prominent like social media guys that. We're just like talking about like this is fucking dumb and they're literally going back on something they said and and there's and like i said i carry water for playstation i make no bones about that but i'm not willing to justify yeah you know like i literally said one thing and now they're saying <laughs> something else and they're you know, like, provide, they didn't provide <laughs> any, sort of, any sort of like rationale or reasoning behind that they're just like oh this is what it is now like you be like hey you didn't say before that it would be only the deluxe edition <laughs> we did not say it though we did not say that um it, it's just an unforced error like i said it, it's just it's just a stupid thing that makes you look bad that people will remember like like this is stuff that people kind of like stick in the back of their mind and, and don't really forget about and they kind of use that as you know ammunition when you do the next dumb thing they can be like oh look at this new dumb thing and i remember when you did this dumb thing back in the day as well um and and as we talked about, like the scalping thing looks bad, and Xbox is dealing with those problems too. And as we talked about on the show before, the Sony doesn't really have a whole lot they can do about that. But at the same time, it doesn't appear as if they are doing anything about that. Not that they right. can. Um, but because they're the thing that everybody wants, they're the ones that are taking like the slings and arrows in in the face of it. Xbox doesn't seem to be taking all those arrows because no one really wants a Series X because Microsoft, frankly, doesn't give a shit. <laughs> you're right they don't care if you get it <laughs> they, want, they want you to get game pass Who gets <laughs> shit? so like i said I, I i i hope sony stops punching themselves in the dick um because i i'm seeing some i'm seeing some like flashbacks of the beginning of the ps3 era and i gotta tell you i don't <laughs> i don't like it i don't like it because i want sony to be successful because i like their uh i like their platform better than the alternative so uh, so a lot of folks were very excited for Sonic Colors Ultimate. Were you one of those folks, Brett? Uh, I dare say that I was not. <laughs> <laughs> I was very excited for Sonic Colors. Um, I was a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, it, it, it's a beloved Sonic game. Uh, from what I understand. It's one of the better ones that they it, sort it, of. It was the first good 3D Sonic game, wasn't it? When it came out? Yeah, I mean, in in terms of like an actual good 3D Sonic game, and not just a 3D Sonic game that people say is good because they have nostalgia for it. Looking at you, Sonic Adventure. Um, <laughs> Adventure Two is fine. Sonic Adventure is a janky ass game that has aged like milk. Um, <laughs> it's not good. Sorry, Sonic fan fans. Sonic Adventure One is not good. But yeah, Sonic Colors. Um, which was originally a Wii game, and I, maybe they made a 3DS version or a DS version. They I did honestly make forget. A 3DS version. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it was a one-to-one -one port. I think that might have been like a another version of it, essentially. Yeah. So. Uh, but in any case, Sonic Colors came out, and people were like, "Hey, it's good. Like, it's fun, and it plays well, and it has cool mechanics, and it's not." garbage like weird story stuff like sonic and the black knight or sonic and the secret rings were um yeah so for the 30th anniversary of sonic part of this was sega being like hey we're going to 
do an updated port of Sonic Colors and release it as Sonic Colors Ultimate. And unfortunately, in true Sega and Sonic Team fashion, the Switch version of the game is a seizure-inducing nightmare hellscape of an experience. <laughs> uh, yeah, people who got... So basically, um, with a lot of games these days, apparently, um, I've seen it mostly with like the Persona games and whatnot, um, Sonic Colors Ultimate had an early access that went live for those who bought the digital deluxe edition, which basically meant that people who bought that edition got to play the game starting a few days early. Um, and people who bought it on Switch found very quickly that it's not what I would refer to as playable. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah here, here, it's... Here's a laundry list of things discovered by players. Uh, load times, bugs, um, audio mix, has been fucked across every platform. Um, they used a open source engine for the game and did not provide credit to, <laughs> to that engine anywhere in the uh, game at all, uh, which they were called out on uh, by, by the folks that uh, developed that engine. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's kind of crazy. The thing that's even wilder about this, Micah, is that this, was, this, this uh, port was... And remaster was done by Blind Squirrel Games, uh, who also worked on the Mass Effect trilogy remaster, which was excellent. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was largely great. Um, it, yeah, it's wild. Um, and people seem to be pointing this out as far as like this really only seems to be affecting the Switch version of the game. Um, the other versions appear to be running fine um but uh people have been really quick to point out that blind squirrel is not a company that has worked for switch development much before if at all and now they're doing it with sonic and uh they screwed the pooch a little bit <laughs> a little bit i would dare say that this level of treatment is exactly what Sonic the Hedgehog deserves. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can tell, you know, you can tell which properties they really care about. Right? Yeah, well. <laughs> like I said, so Sonic got their feel good concert earlier this year. That was, was the high water mark for, well, the, uh, for Sonic the Hedgehog yeah. in, in the year 2021. Maybe also Idris Elba being in the next Sonic movie, you can also consider a high water mark. Rather uh, than the rest of them. Uh, that's real unfortunate. Um, kind of an undersung through line for the Switch so far is, has been uh, some really shitty Switch ports of games that have come out. Um, not too many, but there's enough high profile ones. It seems like it's a lot of third party stuff. Yeah. It's not as though, I mean, we've gotten some really good ones. Skyrim runs great. Yep. Um, Witcher runs without being a mess. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to say it runs great because, like, my comparison for Witcher is running it on yeah. my nice gaming PC. And obviously, it's not going to run as well on the Switch as it does on a PC, but it runs and it's playable and you can play through the whole game and it's not going to look like this. I mean, we literally a month ago, we just got the Skyward Sword uh, remaster port, which is another Wii game to, to Switch. And that plays great, apparently. So I don't, I don't really know what it is. I don't know if this is companies hand waving the Switch versions of these ports that they're doing on and not doing enough QA testing and this, that, and the other, and just not dedicating enough time on it. But obviously, we can see that Switch versions of games that are available on other platforms and Switch ports of games that are available on other platforms work. They can work. They can work for games that are probably a lot more intensive than Sonic Colors will ever be. If it works for Skyrim, I don't know why it doesn't work for Sonic Colors. Um, it it does seem to be a small studio problem because I I, I see it most with games that are in uh, the eShop um, or like the, the most high profile one, arguably was probably Bloodstained when Bloodstained came out a couple mm, of years ago. Yeah. 
uh, the Switch version was a right mess uh, that they eventually fixed uh, to, to their credit. Um, so like I said, I hope the same thing happens here. Uh, or I, if in the barring that, I I do hope they would offer refunds for folks on the Switch. Uh, from what I've under yeah. what I what I've been reading is uh, folks who have bought that digital deluxe edition, which is like you buy the game digitally. Mm-hmm. Um, folks have been able to get refunds through the eShop, which is not something that happens all that often. No, Nintendo, Nintendo. Nintendo is not <laughs> forthcoming when it comes to, to eShop refunds. Once they got your money, they got your money. But that sort of goes to show how severe this problem with Sonic Color seems to be, is that Nintendo is letting people get their money back. And uh, I mean, I hope it gets fixed. I like Sonic. I hope the Switch version works. Uh, I just think this is a, a unfortunate situation to happen for what is supposed to be a celebratory game for Sonic's 30th anniversary. Speaking- Jesus Christ, 30 years. <laughs> I know. Uh, speaking of unfortunate situations, uh, Paradox Interactive, uh, which is a game developer, probably most notable for Stellaris, the uh, space turn-based strategy game. Uh, that's out there. Stellaris and Crusader Kings. Yeah. Being two of the big ones. Yeah. Um, apparently has a really shit uh, discriminatory workplace where almost half of their employees reported that they've experienced abusive or uh, incorrect treatment of some kind. Uh, there's a survey that was conducted by uh, Swedish unions because the studio is based in Sweden. Uh, that says 44% says they've experienced some form of mistreatment. Uh, of those that were surveyed, 26% were women. Uh, and of those 26%, 69% said that they had experienced abusive treatment. Uh, That's so. not nice. No, not nice. Um, oh. Not nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the survey, now these survey results were leaked. Um, this is not something that was officially published, but this did officially happen. Um, The leaked survey results claim a culture of silence at the company where almost no one who has experienced abusive treatment feels that though they can uh, get their issues satisfactory, uh, get get a satisfactory result for them. And uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, And and, and again, this apparently a few days ago, uh, their CEO of the company uh, resigned kind of out of the blue um now they're saying that there's no correlation between this resignation and and the results of this survey coming out Uh, which i I mean i can believe um micah would you like to take a stab at the name of the former paradox ceo let me see come on man like the story is okay (laughs) is it the one that starts with f uh l no, the the last name starts with L. The first name is easy, but the last name starts with L. The only oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Elba. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're cool like that, you know. Yeah. We're on the first <laughs> name. I, I don't need to. I don't. I don't need to. <laughs> Junior. <laughs> yeah, that's the best I, I, I believe it's just Lundergood. I, oh, I, I, Lundergood. Think, okay. I think the J is kind of <laughs> if, my, if my Swedish pronunciation uh, is is pretty good. Um, now Sounds I like I the do, shelf that I have over here. I mean, you know, <laughs> the, 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 the Lundergood shelf that all my toys are sitting on. Um, now I, I do want to give credit where credit is due. So. He, Paradox basically reached back out to Kotaku with a statement in the wake of this news. Um, and here's the statement that they gave. And I'm going to read it verbatim. And I want you to compare in your head and contrast this statement with the statement that we got from another company, <laughs> perhaps based in the U.S. a couple of weeks ago, uh, when investigations into them were leaked out. So here's the statement from Paradox. Paradox says, quote, Obviously, the results of this survey are deeply concerning. The management team wants to ensure this data is acted upon, but taking immediate direct action is legally difficult thanks to the informal nature of the survey, which is not to say it's being dismissed out of hand by any means. 
As stated to the publication that first broke the news, we decided last week to have an independent company run an audit of our processes to report and handle cases of discrimination and harassment. We'll also have them run a comprehensive survey to provide us with clearly defined and actionable data that we can use to make impactful change. At this point, we're in the process of hiring an independent and neutral firm that specializes in this process. Beyond that, I don't have any further detail I can offer right now, but I appreciate you reaching out to us. Is that not the polar opposite of the defiant statement that Activision released in the wake of uh, the news of the lawsuit coming out against them? I mean, it's wild how <laughs> different it is. Yeah, it, it's still very much like a PR sort of move, but the fact that they're like, we're 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 gonna do our best to try and handle it. We're hiring a, a independent neutral firm. We're we're doing everything we can. This sucks, and and we're concerned by it. Whereas Activision was like, they're making this shit up. Fuck those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see, uh, I don't see uh, Paradox rolling out their former Bush administration. Uh, uh, their like, war criminal yeah, executive, executive yeah. saying, "Well, this isn't the Activision that I'm familiar with." That's the <laughs> document here. So, I mean, again, like you said, it reads very PR-like, but credit to them for not shying away and just like knee-jerk denying what's in this survey, what's in this report. Um, I'm happy that they, at least on the surface, appear to be taking it seriously, and I'm hoping that that will lead to positive change within the studio. Um, it does definitely suck that that appears to be going on, and it just goes to show you that shit game studios are not just a North America uh, exclusive problem. No. Even, even, even in the vaunted lands of socialist Sweden, where we all wish we could live, uh, there are shitty bosses uh that treat their employees like dirt so speaking of shitty bosses that treat their employees like dirt <laughs> here we go here's the amazon read guys <laughs> and gals oh, man um deathpisses.com slash amazon is uh where you should go for all of your amazon purchases look we know that um oh oh lex bezos is is trying to find the lazarus pit to stay alive uh forever but um, you still need your knickknacks and, and patty wax. And uh, you should get them from densepixels.com slash Amazon. When you go to densepixels.com slash Amazon for all of your Amazon purchases, you, okay, okay, you're, you're, helping, you're helping a probably evil man, <laughs> right? Sustain his, his fortune. But you're also helping us. And you know it they, that balances out, right? I'm like, we're, we're just as important as as the guy who's gonna create Mega City One one day. You can, I would say you we're can arguably have, more important. Yeah, <laughs> we're like it, pirate radio. You can have you can have three to three to six percent less guilt when buying stuff. Right <laughs> our link. Like you should feel guilty, but you can yeah. feel like a little a little less guilty. There you go. So go to densepixels.com slash Amazon. So I'm looking in the post office here. Uh, there's really only one question that we <laughs> haven't already addressed that Carrie would want to be here for. Yep. Uh, so we'll start with that one. Uh, Saltire84 says, I'm currently playing through Ghost of Tsushima, and it's such a refreshing break from the constant World War II, space age, apocalyptic futures, et cetera, settings. Do you guys have any thoughts on what other rarely used scenarios or settings that you would like to see in video games? Of course, Ghost of Shima took the number one draft pick off the board when that yeah. game Japan. Of, of, of sure. Feudal Japan with Samurais and shit. Yeah. Um, I think uh, for as much like for as much like good and bad that I give the Assassin's Creed series, I one of the things I will always tell them on is that their locales are things that I've never, that you don't see in video games, right? You don't see uh, the, the Jerusalem-ish area in video games. You don't see Africa in in video games. Um, you don't even see like the Bahamas and stuff, right? And like stuff like that is, should be, should be like ripe for, for, for video games, right? Like, 
what open uh, every every gta game is on a fucking island but like <laughs> but there's but there's no like there's no caribbean uh, uh open world game which is amazing to me um i think i th the problem is like you gotta really like the assassin's creed games and people who like them like them i like them but like i they they have their they have their faults um Ubisoft does a very good job of of creating of of setting you in worlds that are underrepresented. Um, Tibet in one of those Far Cry games, um, a a Latin American country in in the newest Far Cry game. They they do a very good job of so if you if you like Ubisoft games, pick one of those uh, pick one of those franchises and see which locales they uh, they put you in. So I would like to see, so like whenever you see cities in games, um, you, in, in modern, in like modern interpretations of cities, they tend to be very American centric. Um, you don't tend to see a lot of like true representations of a ton of European cities, unless it's London or, um, a lot of like current representations of a lot of Japanese cities. Usually when you get Japanese cities in games, they're very like stylized versions, of real Japanese cities. So I would enjoy seeing contemporary cities, but cities that have like a lot of old architecture in them. So I'm thinking of like a lot of, you know, cities in Western Europe that don't get a lot of play in games. Like even like Paris, like Paris would look cool as shit if it was done like true to life in a video game, but also like Amsterdam, Brussels, you know, play, places like that that don't get as much play. I would love to see like real life Tokyo in an open world game or, or other areas in Japan as well. Um, I think that stop like settling on like the New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, <laughs> like, like trifecta. Yeah. I was just American about to city. say, like, yeah. I would love to see any other American city that isn't <laughs> New York, Los Angeles or Chicago. Or, or Miami, unless you're going to, yeah. unless you're purposely going to set the game in the eighties. Yeah, sure. Fine. So. <laughs> like that's fine um i think for me um locale wise i would love some stuff in like parts of south america that with a game that like maybe isn't focused on like terrorism i don't know that'd be great um, <laughs> like i would i would love to do or drugs like a <laughs> yeah right like can we you know i i think an exploration of um like I, I when I was younger I was really into like um Aztec mythology and stuff like that I think that would be cool if handled correctly and respectfully um scenario wise or like time period wise um I know I'm just saying this because I've been really into this YouTube channel um called Townsend's where it's like they do 18th century cooking and I just think it's nice and wholesome and it's fun to do stuff the way that it was done 300 years ago. But obviously shit for 300 years ago is like maybe not appealing to all people. And I understand that, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I feel like we, there's, there's the period of like, 250 years from like the mid 1600s to the early 1900s that games just don't really want anything to do with most of the time and that's a huge period of history that people just don't really want to touch mm -hmm. um and i think there's obviously a lot that happened there good and bad and i think um it could make for an interesting setting an interesting scenario uh and it, it doesn't get it doesn't get touched a lot. I feel like a lot of a lot of games either go way far back to ancient times or they're doing something relatively modern. Um, and I don't know, <coughs> like. I just realized that it would be super dope if they did like a Reformation era Assassin's Creed game. <laughs> like that might actually be really cool <laughs> if, if, to, to see that franchise tackle that specific uh, part of history. So there there's there's a lot there history wise that I think makes for compelling content. Yep. 
Um, obviously, the key is like, is is a video game necessarily the best place to explore the issue of slavery in multiple cultures throughout the world? Because <laughs> one could argue probably with, not. I'm going to go with yeah. probably not. <laughs> I'm going to go with probably not. <laughs> But I don't think you could do a game in America in the 1700s and not touch upon that subject. I think that would be worse. So it is that sort of double-edged sword. Or I without would... having like a bunch of like, you know, uh, uh, black like savior characters to, mm -hmm. to you know, like not without yeah. having a bunch of bagger vances all over the place, you know <laughs> right. what I mean? I will stick with the YouTube channel that I've been watching because I think going through recipes from 300 years ago is fascinating. Um, yeah, that's it for me. Every other question was to do with wrestling this week. Yeah. Um, so, sorry, yeah. that's fine. I got to go to the gym anyway. Um, quick, quick hits for me before I turn it over to these two for the rest of the episode. Um, this weekend, if you are local to the Baltimore area, um, the BGSO and my band Quick Save will be performing at the Ricer Sound Festival Saturday and Sunday. We're doing multiple performances on both days. The event is free. The weather's supposed to be really nice. So if you're local to us, come check us out. We're going to be playing video game music. It's going to be a good time. Um, and then I'll be back to remind y'all of this again at the end of the month. But uh, the last Saturday in September, uh, the 25th, my band Quick Save is playing at the inaugural Good Game Fest in Westminster, Maryland. So that should also be a really good time. Other than that, that's it for me. Uh, enjoy your wrestling. <laughs> oh, and we will. I'll see you next week. <laughs> so most of the other questions in the post office pretty much centered around what happened at All Out this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, so I figure we can talk about all out generally and then kind of address the specific questions that were asked by by a couple folks uh mostly cam and ev in the uh <laughs> in the chat there um so obviously all out uh was a landmark show not necessarily because of the action that happened at the show but mostly because it was the first wrestling match that cm punk has participated in in over seven years and because uh of the debuts of uh ruby soho and to of course a much greater extent uh brian danielson and adam cole uh showing up in AEW. um cam asked me am i ready to join the better wrestling shows now that adam cole is all elite uh i'm going to hear be here to say that i am of course heartbroken uh, <laughs> but also not surprised because as i said a couple weeks ago when we talked about this um adam cole is completely justified in not necessarily trusting wwe to carry him forward yeah, there's a there's a rumor going around that you know they 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 tried to keep him and one of the pitches that they used to try to keep him was that he would be a heel manager on SmackDown. Now, that's just a rumor. Right. That, that, that's but, <laughs> nonsense. But, it, but, it, but if that's true, right. then Adam Cole was the <laughs> smartest guy in the world to run screaming away. <laughs> and by the way, not only does potential misuse of, of Adam Cole result in this, but WWE is completely pointless – restriction of their personalities twitch channels also arguably led to this because it was a very real possibility for adam cole that if he was promoted to the main roster that he would have to stop doing twitch which is something that he really didn't want to do because he really enjoys doing twitch or they would fold it like they would do like up up down down and right. fold it into the company and then they take their they take their you know they take their protection money or whatever right which, you know, is bullshit because, right. again, these guys are independent contractors. They're not, you know, going on as, hey, I'm WWE's Adam Cole, even though obviously, like, they get to the benefits of that notoriety. It's not like that they're on there carrying water for the company. They're there to play right. by it. It's like, it's not, it, it's not the same thing. 
Um, arguably, that was the bigger deal. Like, I think everyone knew Daniel Bryan was coming, um, and they had teased that anyway, leading up to it somewhat. Um, I find it interesting. So, so we'll start with EB because EB uh, brings up some of the things that some of the dirt sheet folks are saying and comparing all out to WrestleMania 17 in terms of booking and matches, which is a ridiculous statement. I mean, look, I, I saw all out. Uh-huh. Uh, I watched it. It was a very good show. It was their best pay-per-view. Uh, it's not without its faults, right? Like, but the show on the whole, I enjoy it. Now I watch AEW um, enough that I know everybody on that. I know, I knew who everyone was and I'm really interested in like the tag division because I love tag team wrestling. I think it's, I think it's uh, just fucking awesome uh, form of theater. And, um, and so the show up and down, look, is an A plus show. I, it's their best. Let me tell you some of the things that they need to fix. Okay. The Casino Battle Royal is a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> Just, I don't know if the, I don't know if the format of the Royal Rumble is uh, uh, intellectual property that WWE has that nobody else can, can use, but you got to figure out another way to, 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 to steal the Royal Rumble idea because it's just, it's so, it's too much going on. It's, it's, it's stupid, right? Like, you know how, it, do you know so how it's, it's, can you, yes. Yeah, can you explain the rules of the, of the casino battle royale to me? Okay. So essentially there are, there are four suits. Okay. And, and each suit has five different cards or, or uh, wrestlers. Okay. They, the first suit, each four come out and they, they come out in packs, right? So, they come so out time? they come, yeah, they come out five at a time. Oh, but there's five suits. There, no, no, no. There oh. Are f- oh, so, so like, so like there's four people in each suit and then like, they're like, all right, the diamonds. There are five people in each suit okay. and the diamonds come out, five wrestlers come out at the same time. Okay. Now in the beginning, in the beginning, it's like, okay, here's. You know, here's uh, here's uh, Anna J. Here's Kira Hogan. Here's uh, Dynamite. Here's 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 Nyla Rose. Right, like they all come out and then they start wrestling. Right. And then three and a half minutes later, the next suit comes out. So okay. five more people come out at the exact same time, but they're given their individual entrances and theme music. So while people are wrestling in the ring, you hear do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do, right? And then someone comes down and then it immediately cuts off. And then Justin Roberts announces, and he's announcing all of them. Uh-huh. And he's like, uh, and here's this person. Beep, 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 beep. And, and now this person. Do, 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 so, do, 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 like, so, so what so what determines the order that they come down in when their suit gets called? Like, is there, any, is there any rhyme or reason beyond that? It's it's it, it appears to be random. Okay. It appears to be random, but it doesn't matter because they're coming out one after another, and they used to all come out at the same time. Right, which doesn't make it, sense from a pro wrestling logic standpoint because why wouldn't they beat the shit out of each other on the way down to the ring? Right, right. right. So, and I guess they realize that. So they're like, okay, well, let's just have them all come down, but we're giving them their theme music while everything is it, it, it's it's a mess. And then after all four suits are out the joker card is pulled number 30 basically okay right number 30 comes out and that's usually the big surprise right like everyone's waiting to see who the joker is right last last pay-per-view they had the joker was leo rush right like very unexpected this one oh wait everyone... they run this gimmick at multiple events yeah yeah it's uh, not like yeah it's not like a, a big like yearly event they've done it at at multiple uh, pay-per-views but this year was ruby soho right mm-hmm. and like you're waiting for the joker but at the same time like it's just a mess and and the camera doesn't know where the camera doesn't know what the focus on well and see right? that's the problem so that's the same problem that world war three had because they were like all right so like the royal rumble is like 30 people that come out a bunch of people at a time dusty Rhodes is like what if we do 60 people at once across three <laughs> rings and then it whittles down it whittles out to one and which which sounds cool in concept until you realize that 
it's impossible to watch three rings of 20 people's worth of action and comprehend what's going on for at least the first 15 minutes of the match. Right. Like, like even the just, announcers couldn't keep up with what was going on. Right. It, it, it isn't, it isn't, it isn't good. Second of all, second of all, Excalibur is the only person worth a damn on the mic. <laughs> he really is. You got to like Tony Schiavone. Tony Schiavone's fine. If you like Tony Schiavone mm. and, and God help him. God love him. Jim Ross, hang it up, bro. It's, as it's, as, it's, as we as we've talked about many times before. Yeah, man. Like I I like Jim Ross. I respect him, but like he's becoming like Booger McFarlane in his in his analysis. You know what I mean? Like it's like, well, you know, he's got to he's got to pin him in order to get the one, two, three. Like, yeah, okay, all right, thanks, Jim. Uh, <laughs> like like I get it. I respect you, dude. It's time to hang it up, right? Um, but everything else on the card. Um, even the matches that were like dumb, like, like Paul White and QT Marshall, mm -hmm. like that was there to cool the crowd, but like, uh, so I understand why it was there. It was dumb, but it didn't let, it didn't wear out as well. Right. Like from top to bottom, it was booked pretty well outside of the, the debacle. That's the casino Royale. So look, I enjoyed it watching punk Russell. It was cool. Um, it, it, you know, he's, he's not as quick as he used to be, but you know, it, it, there's a little bit of ring rust there, but it was cool. Um, well, and, and so here's, so I, I did not watch the show cause I'm not paying $50 for a wrestling pay-per-view in 2021. What the fuck is this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What the fuck is <laughs> like, like, fig, fig, figure out a fucking streaming solution. <laughs> um, or do what I did. Or yes. Or that. Um, <laughs> so here's the thing. So like, I think that this all out pay-per-view will be remembered in the same way that bash the beach 96 was remembered bash the beach 96 was not remembered for being a fantastic wrestling pay-per-view. There were some good matches on bash the beach 96, but it's not remembered for the wrestling. It's remembered for the formation of the NWO at the end of the show. Like, like it's remembered for that specific match. Not that the matches were bad. From what I understand, the, the tag team title steel cage match was probably the best match on the card. That's the match that people will remember. It was yeah. amazing. It's everything that I want in wrestling, right? It's tag yeah. teams. It's family shit, right? It's, it's flippy shit. I like flippy shit from time to time. A little too many false finishes for my taste, but, but it is definitely the match that's worth watching out of, out of all of these. Everything else you know, unless you follow AEW and are into the storylines, like who cares? Right. But the, that match is the one match that's worth watching. Right. And, and, and for, and for as cool as like the, the Jericho MJF story culmination was like the match was fine. Um, the title match was good, but not spectacular from what I understand. It was fine. I, I enjoyed it. It was yeah. fine. And like I said, CM, like the novelty of seeing CM Punk's first match back also very cool. But people are going to remember this for Daniel Bryan and Adam Cole, ultimately, yeah. at the end of the day. Like that, like, so to compare that with WrestleMania X7, which let's run down the X7 card. This isn't the full card. This is just the notable matches. Uh, the hardcore title match between Kane Raven and Big Show. Kurt Angle, Chris Benoit, never a bad on, one there. Come on. <laughs> uh, Sh Shane versus Vince, which was a dumb match, but also fucking fun for what it All was. All that family yeah. shit. I love yeah. it. Um, TLC, like the TLC match. Right. Like the that's... TLC match. <laughs> Undertaker, Triple H, and then Steve Austin, The Rock. Yeah, come on, yo. Like, 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 like the, the best of the trilogy, by the way, between, right. uh, between those three. So, yeah, like that's that's why WrestleMania X seven is as fondly remembered as it is. It's because of the wrestling matches that were on the show, not because of the ancillary stuff around that, which again, to be bash of the beast 96 is not a bad thing. Like again, that it's going to be a landmark event for AEW. It's probably going to be looked back at as the day that they really got that. They really truly stepped up to the plate in terms of being real competition for WWE, but it's not the greatest paper wrestling pay-per-view in the past three decades. That's an, it's, thing to say. it's AEW's greatest pay-per-view. Yeah. Which is fine. That, right. It's but AEW's they, but they will have better ones by yeah. the way. I yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't put this over 
like there's probably four like takeovers that I could name off the top of my head that I would that I probably put above from what I understand this pay per view right. is all about. Right. Like I like I like you know I, I think of like takeover which one was it? It was takeover New Orleans I think, which was uh had like you know Johnny Gargano and uh, Andrade and Adam Cole winning the North American title and then winning the tag team titles yeah. later on in that triple threat. Like like those are to me much more notable. Um. But yeah, I, I'm I'm now going to be watching AEW a lot more frequently. Uh, I can tell you <laughs> that just because, again, like I, I I think that Adam Cole is truly one of the five, or or maybe not. He's not he's not right now. I think he will be one of the five most important professional wrestlers active in the world. Mm-hmm. I do. I I think he's going to be more important to AEW than Kenny Omega currently is to AEW. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think the ceiling is that high on Adam Cole if they let him run with it, which I can't imagine they won't. Might take some time to get there. Um, the fact that he's aligned himself with the elite automatically has you waiting to see the inevitable Adam Cole, Kenny Omega title yeah. at yeah. some point. No doubt. Um, Adam Cole, CM Punk is a very tempting matchup even though i don't know if cm punk is gonna be able to hang <laughs> yeah i don't th- I, I don't know man <laughs> i don't know like it's he did a he did a good job but at the same time like darby allen was carrying that match man like yeah. I, I i really think he was um look i i like AEW. um they signed like 20 new wrestlers this year mm-hmm. um which feels like a lot um they promised that their women's division is going to be worth a damn uh in the coming in the coming days uh months um i'm i hope that that uh you know everyone i i was watching a bunch of interviews and stuff after it and everyone seems to be like elated to be there i hope that uh, and someone described tony khan as like a uh he gets it you know he's a he's a big fan of wrestling um but I hope they don't go the way of WCW and where, you know, too much talent is booking their own shows. And, <laughs> you know, I just, I hope that doesn't happen. Right. And as much as I, as much as I like respect Cody Rhodes, like he annoys the shit out of me. And, and because he's like, fuck Triple H, but like he kind of is Triple H. And, and you know he kind of always wanted to be you know what i mean and now he's get to live out these fantasies of being triple h i don't um i hope that like everybody keeps their ego in check right like everybody's still like copacetic everybody's like wow this is fresh this is new i feel rejuvenated but what happens when burnout comes right mm-hmm. what happens when we're out of this pandemic and you got to tour a lot right like i hope that they can still keep this up but look i'm gonna just enjoy it while i while it's i'm gonna enjoy it while it's good man i'm gonna enjoy it while it's good i, I will tell you the so the women's division is a bit of a sticking point for me as well because so far in the short time that they've doing this they've really only shown that they have been able to establish one wrestler on the same plane as WWE has been able to establish like six women's wrestlers <laughs> in, yeah. in that time period. Um, and even then, like Britt Baker is very clearly on a tier below Charlotte Flair, Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, Bailey, you know, like like yeah. that, that, like Bianca Belair, like that, that tier of women's wrestling. Um, yeah. You know, she's firmly below that. I think that they need to either develop more stars that can get to that level or just, you know, sign one or two of them <laughs> from WWE <laughs> yeah i mean when their know. contracts come up um i it but it's hard like who do you think would go though i like i it's 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 hard to kind of imagine like i couldn't i could not imagine charlotte flair no in aew mm-hmm. i couldn't imagine becky lynch in aew uh, no, no she better be thanking her lucky stars that uh that wwe likes becky lynch because i but look that's just a personal matter i just don't <laughs> care i don't care for her character of the four horse women i think she's the weakest but um yeah but um you know i don't see sasha banks leaving either I, if anybody yeah. would leave i think out of the four of them it would be bailey and i don't necessarily see her leaving either 
But even even then, don't don't they seem like say like Daniel Bryan and CM Punk and even Adam Cole to some extent, like never truly felt like in the WWE mold. And I think that's one of the reasons yeah. why they were so special. Those five ladies that we just named, you might not like to hear this if you're not a fan of WWE, but they do feel like they're in the mold of like a WWE wrestler. Like it's hard to picture them as not a WWE product for lack of a better term. And I don't like using that term, but at the same time, they feel yeah, they feel like they were homegrown. They feel like they were homegrown. And so like, it's not weird for me to see, you know, Brian Danielson or whatever. I'm going to probably still call him Daniel Bryan because I can't. Everyone does. Yeah, yeah. everyone does. <laughs> um, a better name, quite frankly, than his real name. So. <laughs> um, even though, it, like, it's not weird for me to see Daniel Bryan in AEW because I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, 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 like he fits there. It's not weird for me to see Adam Cole in AEW because because he fits there. It wouldn't be weird if like Kyle O'Reilly ended up in AEW at some point because I think he fits there. It would be super weird if like Roman Reigns ever showed up at AEW. Yeah, yeah, come on, man. Like he's <laughs> you know he's 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 homegrown, man. Right. Like you're not gonna, <laughs> nah, man. No, it would be Plus, super weird if Seth Rollins showed up in AEW, even though Seth Rollins had like indie bona fides before he got to WWE. Like it would still feel weird to see him. Yeah, like a, yeah, he's he's a company man, and there's nothing wrong with being a company man, especially when they treat you well, right? Yeah. But um, but no, all the superstars, like the top tier superstars, yeah. even some who are like mid carders, I can't see Baron Corbin going to <laughs> fucking AEW. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, but like it, Kevin Owens, I could see in AEW. Like Kevin Owens popping yeah. up in AEW would not be would not be surprising at all, honestly. Um, I, I think that if AEW is smart, and I feel like that they are smart, and 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 the fact that they made sure to go after Adam Cole shows that they're smart. I think that they have to go after they have to take the WWE 1999 playbook. They have to go after the guys that are underappreciated in WWE and they have to get those guys and, and, and develop them naturally in AEW. So like if AEW is super smart, as soon as his contract comes up, they should be throwing a fuck ton of money at Cesaro because Cesaro is always yeah. one of those guys that feels underappreciated in WWE. That would probably be, or could potentially be a huge star in AEW. Um, they have to watch out about that because there's a lot of guys that, are going to show up and we're already seeing it with Andrade a little bit that yep. are not <laughs> being as big as they thought that they, they would be in AEW. Yeah. Um, and it turns out that move might not have been the smartest thing to do. It tur- turns out maybe WWE didn't miss the mark when it comes to him. Right. Like, you know, I, I understand that. Um, I understand that like that dude is a tremendous athlete, but professional wrestling is theater, man. And, and one of his, one of his, you know, missteps is on the mic. Yeah. And they, and they're letting him talk. They have, they gave him, they gave him Chavo Guerrero as a manager, but they're still letting him talk. Like that dude needs to be, that dude needs to, that dude needs to, to figure out what to do. I, I don't know, man. It just, one, I think AEW needs to kind of chill with like the signings and stuff. <laughs> like i really do well, like, they're, they gotta, they're, gonna run, they're gonna run into the problem is it, that eric bischoff talks about all the time is that you only have you know three hours television that they're working with every week essentially right and so if you keep signing guy well i guess they have dark too but that you know that is weird. nobody watches dark though right. like hard, like you listening probably watch dark but like they already got you right casual, right? casual fans are not like like people that are tuning in on wednesday nights uh inconsistently are not watching AEW dark right so, and, and, you know, the people on AEW Dark, they don't want to be on AEW Dark. They want to be on Dynamite. They want to be on Rampage, right? So I think they need to really chill with, um, with signing new talent. There's only so much, like, there's only so many times you can, you know, by God, it's Brian Danielson, right? There's only so many times that you can have that happen. Now, okay, like you got you got all the pieces, right? You got you got indie darlings, you got homegrown people, you got former WWE people. Now you now you got to do something with them, right? And you and you, and you got to foster young talent, man. Because look, everybody likes Brian Danielson. That dude is pushing forty, man. Uh, Kenny Omega is pushing forty. 
Like, and there's nothing wrong. You can be a 40 year old wrestler. You can be a 40 year old wrestler and have a really good uh, career, but there's a lot of young talent, man. There's a lot of young talent. Now I wasn't expecting Sam Punk to lose mm-hmm. and he put Darby Allen over. Everybody's putting Darby Allen over uh, verbally. Now you got to do it in the ring. Yeah. Um, MJF is being put over verbally and in the ring, right? But he's, but he's fighting Chris Jericho. Right. Guy now, pushing now, like, like, like if he's, if he's not, if, if MJF doesn't get to pivot and, and he just lost, so who knows where the fuck it goes from here. But if he doesn't get to pivot off of that into like a run towards and probably a reign with the TNT championship at a minimum, if not, you know, if not a grander title, uh, then you're fucking up. But you can't have him wrestle Kenny Omega because Kenny Omega isn't heel, the heel stable. And MJF right. is like a, your fucking ultra shit heel. Like right. he's like your Miz basically right now. Uh, he has his own stable, and that's the other thing too. I, I, I look, look, I like a stable. I do. I like a stable. I feel like that there's too many stables at AEW. Like my so, my wife, who does not watch AEW, whose only exposure to AEW has been when I've had it on, and she's happened to be in the room, is remarking. On the amount of stables that are in AEW, every uh, every male performer is in a stable. I, it I, seems I, like I, it. <laughs> it. It truly seems like it. Everyone's if, running with somebody. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Point. Part of it is because there, you know, there's rumors about the trios titles that are going to be uh, that are going to be introduced soon. Um, and then I read that, um, well, I saw an interview where I think Co- Cody was asked this. He was like, "Yo, like." They're, everybody's in a group you know and he's like well yeah you know you gotta there are no like lone wolves right like you you need you need friends in order to in order to make it you know what i mean and it's just like i don't know man there's, there's, <laughs> it just feels it just feels weird to me it just feels very odd but uh but well, it's different it, well it, it's and it's stupid because it just like it's annoying because it lends itself to predictable looking because when you have these factions and they butt heads against one another, that makes it real easy and real predictable to book six man tags and eight man tags and mm-hmm. whatever, and this, that, or the other thing. Um, and I guess you're, it's a nice safe thing to have because you immediately have something that you can light off if you want to, you know, kick a feud off of some kind. Mm-hmm but it just feels overwhelming, especially as a new fan. Like, like, cause not only do you have to learn who these guys are, but you have to learn like the group dynamics and who do they beef with and this side of the other thing. Whereas it's a lot easier to follow the journey of one character. Of and that's one a person yeah. story. It's a more, compelling yeah. Story. yeah. You got the pinnacle, the elite, the hearty family office, the, the inner circle, the, the, the the dark order yeah. you know, like, like, <laughs> Yo, fucking ton, you know there's a ton of stables now at the same time right like at the same time like they they don't they don't do a lot of breaking up i think someone from team i think uh caged is is like just been ousted from team taz uh because that's unstable um but they don't but they don't they don't they don't break their teams up as as quickly as wwe does right wwe first of all they just throw two singles wrestlers together and say you're a tag team look sometimes okay. that works though sometimes nah, nah, i'm tired of these oddball couples man. That, you can't have four works. oddball tag teams man <laughs> you can't have four of them and you can't make them just to make some stupid portmanteau of a team name rk bro rated rk bro or whatever i'm tired of that shit right and they do it just so they could break them up like yo, the 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 rockers breaking up was impactful because they were the fucking rockers, man. Like it's true. <laughs> like you can't just oh, I can't believe uh uh Rhea Ripley and Nikki ASH broke up two weeks from now. Let no shit. They were they were they weren't a team. Get out of here. Oh, I can't believe uh um uh the what's the uh, Shayna Baszler is 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 fighting with Nia Jax. Yeah, no shit, because they're not a team. They're just two people you stuck together. That's that, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Like you are you are correct that WWE continues to do an absolute shit job of building actual tag teams. <laughs> yeah, like, 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 like for for every, for every street profits, there's like three of the of the mashups that you did. 
yeah man just to, <laughs> just, just, to, just to have more tag teams in the uh in the in the mix so i i i can agree with you there um but again on the AEW side i just feel like it's too it's it's too many it's too hard it's too many to, stables. to, to, too many to stables. keep this shit together um unless you're gonna do something with it like like if you're gonna if you're literally going to have like like you said, like a trios title or, or some sort of like stable ranking that like, you know, of, of, of some kind, then that makes sense because then, you know, you can have them competing for something and you could like spin that off in like stable battle Royal. I don't know. There's, there's all sorts of shit you can do if you actually do stuff with it. Right. Because right now you're, you're, you're approaching NWO, NWO Wolfpack, NWO Latin. Oh, you're there. You're yeah. There. You're like there. it's there already. It's, it's especially like i said like like you you've taken the like you have the elite which has the world champion it had it had the tag team champions in it um and now you basically added like oh look here comes randy savage and now he's in the elite now too like 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 you're making the super group bigger adam cole feels like he's above the tnt championship unless they're going to do more to elevate that title it feels like he's above it. So you have two choices. You can either elevate that title to give him something to go after, unless you have stories for him that are more compelling, or um, you can create another men's another men's secondary championship, which again, I don't know what the, pe- like, it, it's hard. It's a hard, it's a hard thing to figure. I don't think they want to go like slap happy with championships, which no. I also understand. Yeah. Um, but I feel like now that you have too many wrestlers and not enough, things for them to tangibly chase yeah yeah it's only so much uh you know well you're just gonna have to get real creative with your storytelling uh which look i'm i'm game i'm game let's uh let's see what happens but all out uh i enjoyed it uh i enjoyed it uh most in at the most i enjoyed it was in the moment Mm -hmm. right like like hearing uh uh rod of the valkyries uh to a trap beat which was very weird (laughs) but but it was cool it was cool to see these people come out it was cool to see these people um make their debut now it's just like what you gonna do man yeah what you gonna do i i also will say speaking of theme music it's incredible that adam cole has managed to have five different theme songs over the years that have all kind of sounded the same yeah i was like (laughs) wait what He, he, he managed to have, have uniquely savey theme songs, essentially. Yeah. Now, I think they might be done by the same artist, right? Like, are they I don't all think done so. by the same artist? I don't oh, think so. Like, I, 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 I know for a <laughs> fact that the same dudes who did the Undisputed Era theme did not do his, his short-lived NXT solo theme. Uh, who I don't think did this one. And someone else made the point on Twitter uh, that guys, singers that sound like Zach De La Rocha will always have a career in professional wrestling themes. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's never not a market for guys who sound oh, like a low grade version of Zach De La Rocha <laughs> <laughs> in the professional wrestling space. Um, <sighs> So I think I think that's enough uh, for, for this week. Uh, thank you guys for watching and listening. Don't forget to subscribe on Discord at deathfix.com slash fans. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcast to us and all the other TNT shows. Uh, hit the subscribe button on YouTube, youtube.com slash deathfixels. And then follow us on Twitch. I'm Ben Smith with Brad, Terrence Zephyrus and 410. And Carrie, so it's Carrie. Uh, that's it. We'll see you all next week. See you. You're watching the Dense Pixels YouTube channel? Click the subscribe button while you're here and make sure you check out our weekly podcast where we discuss the latest gaming news and our impressions on what games we've been playing.